Good morning viewers, a warm welcome to Kalkine TV. This is Sage and you are watching the Sydney, live from Sydney, the Global Markets Roundup show. And we're bringing you a glimpse of the equity, currency and commodity markets from across the globe this morning. So let's get started. The global stock markets ended lower on Friday as investors grappled with fears of rising inflation and a surge in the coronavirus cases while the dollar edged higher after the upbeat US retail sales data affirmed an economy in strong recovery mode. And the Commerce Department said retail sales rose 0.6% in June, contrary to an expected decline, adding weight to those who say inflation will run faster than the Federal Reserve forecasts and force interest rates to rise sooner than it projects. The benchmark US indices closed the week lower on Friday, July 16th, as losses in the cyclical stocks eclipsed the gains in growth stocks after the Commerce Department said the retail sales rose marginally in June. Amazon and Apple fell more than 1% and NVIDIA lost 4.2% and the three companies contributed more than any others to the S&P 500 and Nasdaq's declines. The S&P 500 was down 0.75%, the Dow Jones declined 0.86% and the Nasdaq Composite fell 0.80%. The small cap Russell 2000 shed as well 1.24%. And meanwhile, the retail sales rose by 0.6% in June, the Commerce Department said on Friday. The core retail sales increased by 1.1% in June. It also revised the May sales figures, which further fell from 1.3% to 1.7%. The U.S. economic activities moved at a frenzied pace as demand and the government stimuli encouraged growth and sales of used cars and trucks soared due to the short supply of new vehicles stemmed by chip shortages. And despite declining auto sales, retail sales continued to recover in June. However, the investors took comfort from the positive labour market data released the previous day, which showed unemployment. Benefit claims fell by 26,000 to a 16 month low of 360,000 last week. And seven of the 11 critical segments of the S&P 500 remained in negative territory. Energy and basic material stocks declined while the utility sector moved up the ladder. Let's now take a look at some of the newsmakers. IBM Corp, Verizon Communications, AT&T, Twitter, Intel, Netflix and many other companies are expected to release their earnings reports in the coming week. And meanwhile, Intel Corp, said it plans to acquire global foundries for 30 billion US dollars. Intel stock was down 0.39% in Friday's trading, however, and pharmaceutical company Moderna Inc. will start trading on the S&P 500 from July 21st. The Moderna stock surged 8.11% on the news, and on the other hand, Chinese ride-hailing company DD Global Inc. stock fell 3.88% after the police raided its premises as part of an ongoing cybersecurity probe. In the energy stocks, ExxonMobil fell 2.07%, Chevron declined 1.90% and PetroChina company dropped as well 1.96%, BP PLC ticked down 2.19% and ConocoPhillips was down 1.87%, Enbridge advanced however 0.43%. In the basic material stocks, BHP Group plummeted 1.98%, Newmont dropped 2.39% and Freeport McMoran fell 3.00%. Taking a glance over at the cryptocurrencies in the crypto stocks, Coinbase Global Inc. rose 1.13%, Bitcoin was up 2.52% and Ethereum gained 1.64%. Let's move on now to the futures and commodities. Gold futures were down 0.92%, silver decreased 2.69%, while copper fell 0.37%, the Brent oil decreased 0.42% and WTI crude was down 0.31%. And next, we'll take a look at the bond markets. The 30-year Treasury bond yields was up 0.45%, while the 10-year bond yields increased 0.25%. The US dollar futures index increased 0.09%. And this was the latest from the U.S. markets. Now it's time for a short break, but please stay tuned as we will take a look at the European and the Asian markets after this.
New Zealand is unique, and Kaukine TV is here to bring you all the latest news and trending market updates. Streaming across multiple platforms, so no matter where you are, whether it be at the beach or on the farm, you can count on the team here at Kaukine TV to be your home for accessing the latest valuable insights into global issues that are affecting New Zealanders. Subscribe to our channels across YouTube, Facebook, also visit kaukine.co.nz. Welcome back viewers, Sage here and you're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Global Markets Roundup show. Let us now take a look at the European and the Asian markets. Well, the European stocks fell on Friday as a slide in the Rio Tinto's iron ore exports hammered the mining majors, while the strong earnings from the luxury brands were overshadowed by concerns about their sustainability amid the surging COVID-19 cases and concerns about the higher inflation and rising COVID-19 infections causing a slowdown in economic recovery have weighed on investors' minds this week, driving many of the safety bond markets and making it harder for record high equities to build on gains. Let's move on now to the UK. The London markets traded in a red zone due to the weak performance of the mining stocks and moreover the UK remained all set to reopen next week. The FTSE 100 listed Burberry Group shares plunged by around 5.36%, although the company had reported a significant increase in the first quarter sales and maintained the full year guidance. And taking a look at some of the major newsmakers, Rio Tinto shares dropped by around 3.45% after the company had reported around a 12% decline in iron ore shipments during the quarter due to the disruptions caused in the Pilbara operations. And DCC stated that it had delivered resilient trading performance during the first quarter. Moreover, the operating profit would grow more than the expectations. And furthermore, the shares went up by around 1.88%. The FTSE 250 listed home serve shares grew by around 3.26% after the company had backed the full year guidance ahead of the annual general meeting. And now let us explore some Asian markets performance beginning with Japan. Japan's benchmark Nikkei share average dipped below the psychologically key 28,000 mark on Friday as the tech shares tracked declines on Wall Street overnight while a continued surge in coronavirus infections dented the investor sentiment. The new COVID-19 infections leapt to 1,308 in Tokyo on Thursday, the highest since January, a week before the city hosts the Olympics, which could potentially spark a renewed surge in infections amid the influx of foreign athletes and officials. Yields on most Japanese government bonds rose from multi-month lows on Friday, while investors appeared to have shrugged off Bank of Japan's decision to leave the stimulus settings unchanged. And the central bank cut this fiscal year's growth forecast on Friday, but maintained its view that the economy was headed for a moderate recovery, a sign monetary policy will be in a holding pattern for some time. Let's move on now to the next Asian market, China. Stocks posted weekly gains as investors took comfort in the central bank's surprise decision to cut the amount of cash that banks must hold as reserves to help underpin the country's most post-COVID economic recovery, should I say. And the Shanghai Composite Index closed 0.71% lower on Friday, while the blue chip CSI 300 index was down 1.1%, extending losses from midday. And China's yuan eased on Friday against the dollar strengthened by expectations for faster US interest rate hikes and safe haven demand from the investors globally due to worries about resurgences of coronavirus infections overseas. And despite the dip, the yuan was still set to show a weekly gain, snapping a six-week long losing streak as a slew of recent data showed China's economic recovery might have peaked but remained on track, easing some worries about the world's second largest economy. And lastly, South Korean shares ended lower on Friday, dragged down by tech stocks, tracking declines on the Nasdaq overnight. While the rising local COVID-19 cases also weighed on the investor sentiment, the won edged up while the benchmark bond yield fell. In offshore trading, the won was quoted up 0.1% from the previous day. And that was how the European and the Asian markets performed yesterday. It is time for another short break, but please stay with us. After the break, we'll be taking a look at the Australian stock market.
property by Kalkine. Looking for a dream home? Well, that may sound easy, but it isn't. And from looking for a property that is the right fit for you in terms of cost and other factors, to zeroing down on the right mortgage plan, there are various aspects to consider. And for the latest slowdown in the property market, tune in on Calkine TV with me, Sage. I will give the latest updates on the property market as well as real estate stocks to help you make the right decision. Keep watching Property with Calkine. Welcome back, viewers. This is Sage. You're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Global Markets Roundup show. Let's now take a look at the markets a little closer to home and the Australian share market performance. The ASX 200 under pressure on Monday after the US stocks fell in the previous session. As inflation fears raised concerns despite robust retail data and better than expected earnings reports. On Friday, the ASX 200 ended the week on a strong note, up 0.2%. And the Australian tech stocks could trade lower on Monday after weak performances from the US peers on Friday. Shares of Apple closed 1.4% lower after hitting a record close just two days before and Netflix shares fell ahead of its second quarter earnings report this week and as a result the Australian shares such as Afterpay, Brainchip Holdings and Zero could face selling pressure. Major stocks such as Viva Energy Group, Santos and Woodside Petroleum could be in focus today. Gold miners such as Northern Star Resources, DeGray Mining and Silver Lake Resources could be under pressure today. And lastly in today's show, the major Australian economic data releases this week include minutes from July's Reserve Bank of Australia's policy meeting on Tuesday. June retail sales is due on Wednesday and trade and quarterly business confidence data will be released this Thursday. And thanks for joining us on that report. That is all for now, but please stay tuned with Calkine TV for more of the live market updates. We will be back with more news on the markets, economies and diverse themes and sectors. Sage signing off.